So let's start. So as you know, my session is about Entity API. Uh, we will talk exclusively about that. Uh, session will be a mix of concepts, code, and everything in between. Uh, so let's go. Sentence about me, Drupal developer for seven years, six, seven, and eight. Actually, I started quite late with Drupal 8. <clears throat> uh, technical lead and architect in Foreo. Foreo is a product company, not IT company, not web shop, not startup, but the product company, but with in-house dev team. Who are you? Uh, please help me out um, with, uh, with this presentation in a way that, uh, can you please uh, raise hand, uh, who is not a developer here? Okay, not writing code, fine, great. Okay, uh, who is, uh, who built a custom entity type in Drupal 7? Okay, and who built it in Drupal 8? Oh, it will be fun. Great, thank you. Okay, so the session is organized into three uh, groups. Um, the first one is general stuff regarding Entity API to familiarize uh, our sel ourselves with, uh, with it. And then just a couple of sentences uh, to present one small case that we will try to um, build in the third uh, part. Okay, so entity. Well, I like this um, sentence from Drupalize Me that uh, it's a basic building block of Drupal data model. Sounds fine. A uh, little more elaborate one is from Drupal.org, which is more familiar uh, for, for Drupal developers, that it's a comment, taxonomy term, user profile, uh, article, product, bundles, and stuff like that. So <clears throat> since Drupal is actually a CMS or CMF, uh, entity actually is... <laughs> I was scanning this in Drupal 8, and I found out that it, it's the biggest part of Drupal, actually. If you open all the APIs and scan them, just, you know, to get an uh, idea, this is the biggest one. And it's quite logical, because it's a content management system, content, data, entity. So, <clears throat> and it's quite interesting uh, for me, that I found out uh, during my development in Drupal that a lot of people are actually not very familiar with entities. Um, you have Node, then you can create a bundle and put a bunch of fields there. And if you need something completely different, which is not a Node with publish, sticky, publish on from page, stuff like that, then you, tr you are trying to, f uh, you try to find a contrib module to satisfy your needs. But here, we, uh, I would like that we dive deeper into this. So, what do you think? How many entities are here on this slide, on this page, Drupal.org? What would you say? Well, I'm counting one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen at least. What was your number? <laughs> okay, uh, so let's step back from from you know nodes and Drupal terminology, but let's 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 go much more on a more fundamental level. 
Um, if you ask data scientists uh, and people in that realm, uh, they would say that at the bottom you have data, on top of it you have information, on top of it you have knowledge, on top of it you have wisdom. Uh, I like this analogy because I would say that entity, not in Drupal but in general, actually is information. I mean, data is, you know, when when the page was created, when it was uh, changed, uh, who's the user, what's the title, but just this small piece of data doesn't mean anything. If you combine them together into a bigger group, higher group, you get an entity. So that's why Drupal community embraced this, this term. Okay, but let's go back to Drupal. So, I mean, when, when we talk about content and we talk, when we talk about data, uh, it's a lot of fun there and uh, it's, not, it's not very simple. Um, Drupal organized entities, I mean, entity structure, entity management, data management, into a couple of layers. So entity group, I'm talking here uh, in terms of Drupal 8. So the biggest group here is entity group. And there are only two, content and configuration. That's it. Then, by the way, um, I will talk only about content entities. Um, I think there is a session, um, plugin API or something like that. I believe that they will talk more about configuration. But uh, if you want to understand what's the difference, I mean, content entities are actually something that consists of fields and configuration. And actually, content managers are playing with it, creating nodes, blocks, I mean, blocks, pages, product displays, whatever. Um, and configuration is more for site developers and uh, developers. So uh, we will continue now just with content entities, which are much bigger group. Um, then uh, we have entity type. So inside content entity group, we have entity type. Entity type is node. Entity type is taxonomy term. Entity type is menu link now in Drupal 8. So there are a lot of um, entity types in Drupal that come with core, and in this session, we will create a new one. Then, if we narrow it down, we will get to bundles. We are very familiar with them. We create, uh, we have article and basic page when we install Drupal and then we continue to build new ones. And then the black spot actually is an entity. It's actually that piece of content about us, right? Or blog post X, Y, Z. An entity have one or more fields. So this is, you know, a big picture. So, as I said, uh, content entities in Drupal 8, there are nodes, users, taxon user, taxonomy term, file, comment, block content, manually content, and contact message. Of course, if you enable some other modules, maybe there are more. But when you install the vanilla default Drupal, you get these ones. Uh, in Drupal 8, um, Block content and menu link content, the last three uh, were introduced. We, did, we don't have them in Drupal 7, unfortunately. Um, but now the situation is much better. On the other hand, configuration entities are taxonomy, vocabulary, node type, I mean, as a configuration, not as a piece of you know, content about. Uh, view, so view actually doesn't cons is, uh, doesn't have data. It's more configuration, right? We want uh, 
table layout or we want list layout or we want footer header we want this and that so this is configuration but still an entity uh, contact form block content types etc there are a bunch of them in core by the way and it's great because they are all lying on the same basis so there are entities all of them and sharing the same base classes and it's much easier to play with them when it's so you know, it was bothering me from the beginning when I jumped into Drupal world. I'm coming from .NET world. When, uh, when you start playing with Drupal, you start with node, especially in Drupal 6. You know, you have nodes, users, then you have, for users, if you want fields, then you need some crazy uh, contrib modules so that users somehow become uh, fieldable. Then you have the same with the taxonomy term. In Drupal 7, it was much, much better. So unfortunately, it was not completed uh, until the release of Drupal 7. But uh, entity contrib module, I'm sure that on all your pages on Drupal 7, you have it, uh, uh, rescued us a lot, helped us. So. Okay, just a sentence about, about um, entity types. So entity types, node, you can, you can look at like node is one of entity type, can be fieldable, node actually is, revisionable, translatable. Um, in Drupal 8, it's great because every entity type has a dedicated class, which is great. OOP, thank you, welcome. Um, an entity, um, so, you know, to describe, to describe uh, an entity type, okay, we have a new structure of data. Uh, in Drupal 8, you have entity type definition that we will look, um, we will, uh, we will uh, dissect it in, in much details uh, later. And we have field definitions also, you will see. And you know, if you're asking yourself, okay, but why do I care about that? Um, there are much, as I said at the beginning, a lot of people start with something that you get already in Drupal, nodes and term, taxonomy terms, So you install a paragraph module, then you get a new entity type, paragraph with bundles to create your landing pages to be beautiful. Uh, then if you are dealing with a commerce site and you have a web shop, then you install a whole ecosystem of commerce and you get a bunch of entities there, commerce product, commerce payment transaction, uh, profiles, billing shipping, uh, and a couple of them more that I can remember. Uh, but sometimes you need a new one. Sometimes you need, for example, I, uh, the last project that I've been working with uh, in the company is that uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, codes, coupon codes, are coming with every product and uh, from ERP system need to be sucked in into Drupal so that people can get discount. Uh, so how to deal with it? What should I do? To start with Node? Uh, so <clears throat> it would be, I suggest you that you consider next time when, you know, um, when no doesn't smell good, uh, I encourage you to start thinking about creating your own entity type to, to, feel, uh, to get exactly what you want. And you will get a much more benefit performance wise and um, how your data structure will be elegant, not, cr not creating 35 tables in a database with a bunch of fields, then site becomes slow, then yes, we slap varnish on top of it, and, and, uh, but still it's not, it's, not, it's not the best option. Uh, then if you narrow down, then we have bundles and fields, you know all about it. In Drupal 8, <clears throat> it's great. I don't know if you're aware of, but uh, in Drupal 7, 
uh, you had properties and fields. Properties for node entity type was created, changed, title, node ID, user ID, properties in a base table, and you could not play with it much, and you could, or you can, put their fields by clicking on UI. On Drupal 8, everything is different now. Everything is field, everything. But still, they're calling it base field and bundle field. Base field is actually node ID created for node entity type. Sticky. Because for every bundle that you create, you always have a sticky checkbox, right? So base fields are on the level of the whole entity type, regardless of how much bundle you create out of it. Uh, but bundle fields are just for that particular bundle. Um, fields can be shared across entity uh, type only in Drupal 8. So in Drupal 7, you created a field image, and you put that field into a user and into an article. You, you cannot do it anymore. So you, a field can be just on a level of particular entity type. You can have the field with the same name, but it's not the same field. Um, and entity-based swappable storage, it's quite interesting because now uh, storage is not on a level of field like it was in Drupal 7, but on a level of entity. So it's, you can have nodes in MongoDB and you can have users in MySQL. You will need that. <laughs> OK. Just a couple of lines of code regarding CRUD. So it's uh, very powerful when you know this stuff. When you know that you know Drupal is lying on top of data, and when you have a power to utilize that data as much as you would like. Uh, to call this node, that node, to create a relationship in code, and you, to get out whatever, whatever you want. So just a little bit about that. So do you see? Is OK? Contrast and size. So um, content type manager is your best friend if you are playing with Drupal entities. Content type manager is a big boss of data, and you can get out of uh, it whatever you want. For example, this is, I think, very simple, even if you are not developer, to understand it. It's not crazy like it was before. So Drupal, uh, as a base top level class, uh, you call entity manager, entity type, sorry, entity type manager. I don't know if you have played with it, but uh, entity manager still is there, but it's going to be obsolete. So entity type manager gets storage node. I want nodes. Entity type node, not user, not taxonometer, node. Load ID 22, and you have it. The whole entity, it's in your hand. You, you can play with it. You can change it. You, you can print it. You can save it. You can delete it, whatever you want. Um, then. There are a lot of alternatives, actually. The second one is uh, using uh, DITS, so service container, uh, to do the same thing. And of course, you can load multiple of them. So it's quite, it's quite simple and elegant now. The same goes with create. Um, I want to create a node with a title and this body, and you just get it. No brainer. There are also alternatives. Uh, if you're sure that you are dealing with node, then you can you can uh, use a static method create. But the best way is the third one to use the big boss of data entity type manager always to get create save delete whatever you need. Because uh, any type Every day, every entity, node, user, taxonomy term, or a custom one lies, uh, I mean, is sitting on top of entity type manager. 
So there are rules, and then you are sure that you will always get it right, whatever you want. Because those guys, those entity uh, types, from the core or contrib module or your own, they always need to listen rules of the entity type manager. So then you are safe. So I encourage you to use that. The same goes with delete, as you can see. You load it and you delete it. Or multiple one if you need. Getting fields, it's much easier now. I mean, uh, in Drupal 7 we had uh, entity metadata wrapper, famous one. But now this is baked in core in Drupal 8, so we are fine. And very elegantly we can get any, any information uh, out of our node. When we, when we load our node using <clears throat> those lines from a slide before, then you can get body, uh, taxonomy terms, uh, tags, uh, whatever you want, image uh, out of that entity. Uh, you must be careful which, which method to use because if your field is multi-value field, then sometimes you will not get exactly what you want. Then you need to index it, as you can see. Uh, so node field tags one, index one, and then entity name value. And this is great. I mean, uh, if you have node and node actually has uh, owner, UID, user ID, then you can very easily, by knowing just node ID, get birthday, if you have field birthday, in your user, uh, user entity. So if you, created a, if you created a field birthday, uh, date of birth, um, then you can get it out with one line. And with three referenced entities, so whatever is connected with this node about us, give me all of them and I will play with it. Uh, oops, sorry. Sorry, wrong button. Uh, getting more fields, okay. We have a couple of options. Actually, hmm. I like the approach of Ruby on Rails. I'm not a developer in Ruby on Rails, but they usually don't like, don't prefer, and don't actually have much of, you know, doing the same thing a multiple way, but just one. This is their idea, religion. Uh, here in Drupal, we have a lot of them, as you can see. So pick one. And with translation, just, just a second on that. Now it's also very easy to get translations. So you have about us node, and uh, it is loaded in English, but if you need translation, get translation Spanish and give me title out of it. Boom. Okay. So a little more advanced way how to get whatever piece of content you want is entity query. Um, in Drupal 7, it was entity field query. Now it's entity query. Um, yeah, it's a, a support join now, joins. So as you can see, with the, the, the this, do you see my cursor? Yeah, you do. Uh, with this condition. So we are loading node. Uh, I want nodes with status one, so published. Uh, changed before now uh, with a title which contains CAT. Let's say we want that. And with another condition where tax, uh, uh, name of the tax starts with cats. So imagine that. So very simple. Uh, then you load them. And then you play with them, change them, print them out on a screen, send them to uh, Android box, whatever. Um, this is one uh, he, uh, here. I would like to emphasize one thing here. 
uh, you should always play with data like this. So the principle is that you get identifier of a particular entity. Let's say you need a node 100, ID 100. So you, you can use this entity query. When you get node ID 100, load it, change it, do whatever you want with it, and then save it. Don't skip entity API. Don't load directly from a database, play, and save, because you are skipping a whole bunch of magic that's happening. So all the modules that, that are implementing hooks that are altering that node, pre-save, post-save, this and that, you are skipping that. You are also skipping uh, entity cache, which is now in uh, core. And you can uh, be in a trouble. So find your node identifiers, no entity identifiers, IDs, unique uh, data. Uh, load that object, that entity, do something with it, and save it. Please do it always like so. There are extreme cases when, because of the performance reasons, you need to do something else. But usually, that's only read-only stuff. But this is a general rule. And uh, Entity Query also supports aggregation, which is great. So you don't, ha you don't have to deal with SQL. Uh, you can do it in an uh, object-oriented way. So this is one simple example. OK, so I hope my PHP storm is loaded. <laughs> uh, this is the end of my presentation. I have a case and a demo here. Um, I need a task manager. Very simple one, very dummy one. I need to collect title and description, what needs to be done. And I need. I would like to assign a person who will solve that task. And I want a checkbox to mark it as completed or not. That's it. Simple. So to use notes for this, we can do it. But this is much more fun. Now. Let's see what do we have. This doesn't sound good. OK. I need alternative. So this is our module. It's called custom task. Uh, the file structure is like this, as you can see. We have routing, permissions, a module, which I think it's even empty. Uh, links, menu, sections, uh, general info about uh, this module. And we have source. I will jump immediately into the most important thing here. And I think this is be open who knows where. We, do, can we have a notepad or something? Yeah, this will not work. Text reader, not PDX. Yeah, I need help. I haven't touched Windows since Windows XP, so. Ooh, no. 
really? Can we download that? Um, yeah. Atom. Com. Pior. So a small break, huh? Great. We are going somewhere. That's great. Thank you. Thank you very much. So hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. OK. So the most important thing here uh, is when we decide for this task manager, we want another entity type. We want an entity type, which is called custom task. And we want, we want out of it exactly what, uh, what needs to be there. So um, ba, 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 ba. OK. So uh, it's called annotation in uh, Drupal 8. We are using. Uh, Doctrine component, doctrine, I don't know if you have heard, probably you did. Uh, it's a ORM uh, for handling data. Um, and uh, using this annotation, actually, we are introducing this entity type to Drupal. Look, Drupal, hi, I want something special. I don't like what you have out of the box. I have a special need, please. Do exactly as I said. I respect your rules. So, and then we are all happy. So, we, are, we will tell him, please, entity type, custom task, label, custom task. There are a lot of handlers which are dealing with a lot of things. One is view handler. Then we have a list handler. View handler is when you open about us page, it's a view handler. View handle, handler is handling that display. List, uh, list builder is when you open content and you have a list of all the nodes. That's a list handler. Then we have views data. If you want to have integration with views, because we want our tasks to be displayed using views, then we are telling him, look, this class is in charge of that. And then our tasks will be uh, uh, available in views. Then about form also. So it, it goes very, very specific into every, every uh, detail of uh, handling data. Um, we have base table, which is a custom task. 
Is it a fieldable? Yes. Yes. Uh, entity keys, links, and basically that's it. That's what we need. Uh, there, are um, there are a couple of more options, but we don't need them. So now we introduce our entity task, uh, entity type to Drupal with this. And our now we have a class. It's a uh, strongly typed. It's not STD class like in Drupal 7, which is basically an array. Um, and we have a couple of getters and setters to help us out when we need it. I will skip that, it's boring. Uh, and here is a base field definition. This way, we are telling, uh, we are telling Drupal, look, I need those fields. The same is done by core with nodes. There you have title, you have node ID, as we said, etc. Here we need something different. Uh, so we have title, we have content of this task, we have user ID, uh, assigned to, so the task is assigned to, to someone, then there I am, and is it closed or not, created and changed, that's it. That's what Drupal wants to know from us, and we can start playing with it. Okay, there is a couple of those files that you saw, uh, permissions and links and stuff like that. It's very easy. It's a com I mean, if you are a Drupal developer, then it's no no brainer. But this is the most important part, and it's not so hard. Even um, entity module is. Uh, again, in Drupal, uh, available for Drupal 8. And if you enable it, then um, it will speed up even this. Uh, maybe 30% of this code would not be even needed. So, um, we can just quickly go through others. So here, for example, we want that when someone, project manager or quality assurance guy or someone, uh, assign a task to someone, that that person sees only that tasks, not all of them. Here, it's very easy to accomplish it. Because, of course, we have one handler, which is access handler, which is taking care of that. We create a couple of permissions, and then we implement this handler, <clears throat> when we say, oh, if it's a, I mean, for viewing, for editing, for deleting, and for creating, if you have this permission, you are allowed to do so. If not, sorry. And what we get out of this? So let's check. We scan very quickly. But... As you saw, it's very, very simple and uh, not, not much of code. And I think, just a second, sorry. Okay, here it is. By the way, this is our demo. I mean, from the code that I showed you before, we have this. Voila. Um, this is vanilla Drupal installation with bootstrap and with color scheme slate. 
and I removed those couple of blocks, which is toolbar and search on the right side and stuff like that, so it's clean. So, add new task. It looks like a web application, not like CMS. Huh? Oh, I don't know if I have some users. Yeah, I have. Voila. We can edit. We can delete it. Oh, we have some glitch visual here. Never mind. Um, and we can use it. And this is a full flag Drupal citizen. It's not something, you know, that we did out of Drupal. With this, now you can do whatever you want, just like with nodes. For example, if I go here and uh, task settings, so this is my custom entity type, manage fields, there are no fields because a couple of them that are there are base fields. Actually, you can get it out on this screen also if you want, but we don't care much about it because we want to manage form or manage display with those fields. Drag and drop up and down, changing for matters and stuff like that. So, just like with Node, but this entity type is not bundle one. Um, you cannot uh, have bundles on top of it. It's very easy with uh, configuration entity to create a, a manager for, for having bundles on this custom entity if you want, but I don't need it for my particular case. So no bundles, but fields as much as you want. And also, of course, if we go to use, and I want to create some fancy view with the data, because let's say I have a couple of thousand tasks already there, then it's integrated here, because we define handler for it, if you remember. Now, add view, and custom task. And I can go on. Uh, yes, page. I would like to have a page. Thank you. Title. I will write AAA with one hand. Actually, it's funny that uh, the list of the tasks, actually, I have just one, has a path um, custom underscore type slash list. If I create now a view with the same path, view will be displayed there. So view is overriding my default display from a list handler. And then I can have paging, sorting, whatever, whatever we want. So here you go. You can create node exactly what you want. Very, very easy. And you can get, and not even to say this, but in database, I don't have tools now to show you. In database, this is one table. No joins. This is performant as hell. If we need to have it out of cache or for your particular use case, who knows. And that's it. That's it. I have nothing more to say. So. <laughs> thank you. Uh, questions? Shoot. Hi. Uh, how much of this can you generate using uh, Drupal console? Great question. Uh, Drupal space generate colon module, enter. Then Drupal generate colon uh, content entity, entity content, something like this. And you have the whole skeleton. My suggestion, yes, you have 70% of the code that I did. 
So it's very, very fast. I suggest you, as a learning curve, not to do that. I suggest you to go step by step, line by line. Just open a couple of entities. Open node, taxonomy term, uh, open block content, couple of them, and look at them. You know how they behave. And, you know, with reverse engineering approach, you know, okay, and try to build your own. And then when you do a fifth one, then you can speed up. Because with, you know, with, uh, if you don't, I'm not fan of, you know, generating code when you are not sure what exactly is generated. So it's much better to spend a couple of hours. But yes, yes, that's for sure. Uh, it's a great tool. Thanks. Any more questions? So, I guess no more questions because you are hungry, yeah? Ah, okay. Uh, yes, the question is from Ivo Kovacevic. Will code be available on uh, GitHub or somewhere else? Mm, yes, no problem. I will. I can put on Pantheon, I guess, also this uh, this demo, and on GitHub. Um, you can. I, I mean, I need to talk with organizers, but a uh, link should be there uh, on a page of this presentation on Drupal Heart. Dot HR. So, yeah, no problem. Let's go eat.